Okay, let's dive right in. We've got some really uh, fascinating material you shared. Mm. We're taking a deep look today at insights from Dr. William Lai, you know, the physician and researcher, right? focusing specifically on his views about certain drinks. And yeah, we're going beyond just water here and how they might actually stimulate our stem cells. And support regeneration, maybe even longevity. It's compelling stuff. Exactly. And we're pulling this, uh, this information directly from a discussion with Dr. Lane himself based on those source excerpts. Yep. The goal is really to zero in on those practical bits, the takeaways. What can people actually use from this? And the core idea, which I find really grabs you, is this connection he makes between stem cells and, well, our body's repair system. Basically, more healthy stem cells seem to mean better repair, maybe a longer health span. While, you know, damage or fewer stem cells could be problematic. So the big question we're exploring is, can what we drink day to day actually nudge these stem cell processes? And according to this source material, the answer seems to be a pretty clear yes. Which uh, definitely makes you think twice about your morning coffee or tea, doesn't it? It really does. It connects something simple, like a drink, to something fundamental like regeneration. Okay, so just for context, the source reminds us about Dr. Lai. He's Harvard trained, a medical doctor, researcher. Founder of the Angiogenesis Foundation, involved in developing, what, 40 plus FDA approved therapies? Right, and author of Eat to Beat Disease. So he's coming at this with a strong scientific background. Decades of research into how diet impacts our body's defenses. So when he talks about specific compounds and drinks, it carries weight. Before we hit the specific drinks, though, the source lays out a few broader tips from him. Kind of foundational stuff, like staying hydrated, water is key. Absolutely. Dehydration just makes everything work harder, makes your system less efficient. Then the advice is generally eat what you like, but really lean into plant-based foods. Yeah, getting that variety of plant compounds seems crucial for activating those natural defenses. And importantly, steer clear of ultra-processed foods. And watch the added sugars. Those are kind of the baseline rules Dr. Lee sets out before you even start thinking about specific superfoods or drinks. Got it. So with that foundation, let's get to the drinks Dr. Lee highlights as uh, go-tos for health beyond just water. He mentions water, tea, coffee, yeah, but says what you add is critical. Ah, uh, yes. This is where the details really matter. Mm. You can uh, inadvertently cancel out the benefits if you're not careful. Okay, first one up, tea. Green, black, oolong, they all get mentioned. What's the big deal with tea, according to him? Well, it's packed with natural polyphenols. You've probably heard of catechins, like EGCG, epigallic catechanic king gallus. Right. Those compounds are right there in the tea leaf itself. Doesn't matter if it's loose, bagged, matcha. And the course says when you just sip plain tea, these get absorbed easily. That's the idea. Your blood levels of these protective phytochemicals go up pretty significantly after you drink it. And the potential benefits listed are, well, pretty extensive, helping lower stress. Yeah, by reducing catecholamines. Improving lipids, fighting cancer, anti-inflammatory effects. It sounds almost too good to be true. It really does seem to support multiple health defense systems. And, you know, it's interesting about black tea specifically. Mm. For ages, green tea got all the hype, right? But the research is catching up. The source mentions black tea can also stimulate stem cells. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lee points to studies showing it can actually double stem cell numbers. Double them. Wow. So keep an open mind on black tea, too. Exactly. It's a good reminder. OK, now, this next point, I think, is maybe one of the biggest surprises in the material, especially for, well, a lot of us, adding cow's milk or cream to tea. Ah, yes, the dairy issue. What happens there? Why is it a problem? It comes down to chemistry, really. Mm -hmm. Cow's milk has fat molecules. Key is mostly water when you mix them. Uh -huh. The fat molecules kind of clump together into these microscopic structures called micelles. Think of them like tiny, tiny soap bubbles made of fat. Okay, so fat bubbles in my tea. Exactly. And those beneficial polyphenols we were just talking about, the catagens, they like water, but they get trapped inside these fatty micelles. Oh, no. Trapped. So when you drink it. The micelles kind of field them from your digestive system. Mm -hmm. They don't get absorbed properly in your stomach or intestines. They mostly just pass through. You're kidding. You still get the milky flavor, the comfort, but you're essentially washing most of those powerful tea compounds right out without absorbing them. Wow. So someone could be drinking milky tea every single day thinking they're getting all these amazing benefits. And according to Dr. Lee's research highlighted here, they're likely missing out on most of the polyphenol absorption if it's cow dairy. That's kind of mind-blowing. Okay, so for people who really like that creamy taste but still want the tea benefits, 
What are the options? Well, nut milks are generally fine. Almond, cashew, soy. They don't seem to have the same kind of fat structure that creates those trapping cells. Okay, that's good to know. Any other solutions mentioned? Yes. Quite interestingly, Dr. Lee talks about discovering a Taiwanese tea called Jin Chuan. It's often called milk oolong. Milk oolong? Does it have milk? No, that's the amazing part. It's just a tea leaf. But somehow, when it's processed and brewed, it develops this natural, creamy, milky flavor profile all on its own. Wow. So you get that sensory experience, that hint of creaminess, but without any dairy, meaning the polyphenols are still available. Nature's pretty cool sometimes. The source also touched on food synergy with tea blends. Right. This is a neat example. They mentioned a study looking at common teas, jasmine, sencha, earl grey, and a special blend. Mm -hmm. And the fascinating part was combining two teas that were individually less potent actually created a blend that was more powerful than either one alone. So one plus one equals like three in your teacup. Something like that. It suggests that smart combinations might amplify the effects synergy, mm -hmm. just like you said. Love it. Okay, quick question. Caffeine? What if you're sensitive? Decaf options are out there. Yeah. The key thing the source mentions is looking for water-processed decaf. Why water-processed? To avoid chemical solvents, which might strip away some of those beneficial compounds along with the caffeine, water processing is gentler. Good tip. All right, let's shift gears. Beverage number two, coffee. What's the star player here, according to the source? The chlorogenic acid. It's a major polyphenol and antioxidant found naturally in coffee beans. And the benefits listed for coffee are also pretty broad, aren't they? Improving metabolism, activating health defenses. Anti-inflammatory, anti-androgenic effects, better blood flow, and again, interestingly, stimulating your own stem cells. Stem cells again, helping with organ regeneration. Mm -hmm. Plus, it seems to have a positive effect on the gut microbiome, which ties back to inflammation and metabolism. And there was a big study you mentioned, right? Yeah, really significant. The UK Biobank study, they tracked over 171,000 people, folks in their 50s, for about nine years. And the finding. Drinking between, I think it was two and 3.5 cups of coffee per day was linked to a 30% lower risk of all-cause mortality. 30% lower risk of dying from any cause just from drinking coffee. That's what the association showed in that huge group. Yeah. It's a pretty striking correlation. Definitely. Okay, what about organic versus conventional coffee? Did the source mention that? It did, and this was another surprising detail. According to the source, organic coffee beans might have up to three times as much chlorogenic acid as conventionally grown beans. Three times? Why is that? Well, chlorogenic acid also seems to act as a natural pest repellent for the coffee plant. So the thinking is, organic plants that aren't getting sprayed with pesticides might naturally produce more of their own defense chemicals, including chlorogenic acid. That makes sense. So choosing organic could potentially triple your intake of that key compound. It seems like a real possibility based on this information, yeah. Makes a strong case for going organic if you're drinking coffee for those benefits. All right, on to number three. This one can be a drink, or maybe just eaten, cacao, or rather high cacao dark chocolate. Ah, uh, yes. Probably a welcome topic for many. The power players here are the flavanols and other polyphenols that are abundant in cacao. And following the pattern, the source connects cacao to stem cells, too. It does, yes. Studies have shown it can stimulate stem cells. Tell us about that clinical trial mentioned. That sounded pretty dramatic. It was small, just 16 people, but they all had documented cardiovascular disease, blocked arteries. Okay. They drank a special high flavanol hot chocolate twice a day, for 30 days, just one month. And the result? Their circulating stem cells doubled, and maybe even more importantly, their blood flow significantly improved. They measured it using a standard blood pressure cuff. So it wasn't just numbers changing, it was a functional improvement. Doubled stem cells and better blood flow in a month from yeah. hot chocolate. Okay, high flavanol hot chocolate. Right, the concentration matters, but still pretty amazing potential. Mm -hmm. And there was another much larger study too. The German one. That's it. 20,000 people. It found that eating just 7.5 grams of dark chocolate per day was linked to a 39% lower risk of having a heart attack or stroke. 7.5 grams. Yeah. How much is that, really? The source puts it at about three standard chocolate chips. Just three chocolate chips a day. Apparently, that small amount, if it's the right kind of chocolate, might have significant protective effects, according to that study. Which brings us back to that crucial point, like with the tea and milk. It's about the cacao not the sugar and dairy in a typical candy bar. Absolutely critical distinction. 
Dr. Line emphasizes the benefits come from the natural chemicals in the cacao bean, not the stuff added to make milk chocolate or Halloween candy. So to actually get these potential benefits, what kind should you look for? You really need dark chocolate. The source suggests aiming for 73-80% cacao content, or even higher. Why that high? Because at those levels, it's mostly the cacao solids, the plant material itself providing fiber and those potent polyphenols mm -hmm. with much less sugar and other additives. Makes sense. And Dr. Lai's own research, it mentioned in the source, found other potential benefits too, anti-cancer stuff. Yeah, his lab found substances in dark chocolate could interfere with angiogenesis, that's the blood supply feeding tumors. Wow. And in lab tests, compounds from dark chocolate were apparently directly toxic to leukemia cells. So stem cell boost, blood flow improvement, potential heart protection, even right. anti-cancer activity. Hmm. That's quite the resume for dark chocolate. It really elevates it beyond just a treat, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and Dr. Lean makes the point that you know these are things people often enjoy in a tea, coffee, chocolate. Mm -hmm. When you align these enjoyable things with a healthy pattern, like a Mediterranean diet rich in plants, yeah. it becomes powerful and sustainable. Okay, we've covered the yes list. Mm -hmm. Tea, coffee, cacao. Now, the source highlights one common beverage Dr. Lee advises caution with, especially in high doses, Alcohol. Right. The main concern raised here, particularly thinking about stem cells, is that high amounts of alcohol can actually damage or blunt them. Damage the stem cells. Yes. The source notes that chronic heavy drinkers tend to show signs of damaged stem cell populations. And he links this to other things that harm stem cells. He draws a parallel with high blood sugar, mm -hmm. like in diabetes, which is also known to cripple stem cells. It kind of reinforces that idea that excess of certain things is detrimental to our basic repair systems. What about the common idea that alcohol helps you sleep? Lots of people have a drink to wind down. Yeah, that's a persistent belief. But the science, as presented in the source, says otherwise. Alcohol might make you feel sleepy, maybe fall asleep faster. But... But it seriously disrupts your sleep quality. It prevents you from getting into the deep, restorative stages of sleep. You kind of hover near the surface. So you miss out on what Dr. Lee calls full renewal sleep. Exactly. You wake up feeling maybe not quite rested because mm -hmm. you didn't get that truly deep regenerative sleep. Mm -hmm. So controlling or cutting down alcohol is key for sleep quality, aside from everything else. Right. Impacts stem cells and prevents proper rest. Double whammy. Pretty much. Okay, so wrapping this up. This deep dive into Dr. Lai's insights drawn from the source material really gives a practical framework, doesn't it? I think so. It shows how thoughtful choices about everyday drinks like tea, coffee, high cacao chocolate, mm -hmm. And being mindful about how you consume them, like avoiding the dairy trap in tea or excess sugar, right. can actually be tools to support our body's own regeneration via stem cells, plus all those other benefits like better metabolism, less inflammation. And conversely, understanding why something like alcohol, especially in larger amounts, can work against us by potentially harming stem cells and messing with our sleep. It brings it down to specific compounds and mechanisms. So maybe the final thought for everyone listening is, Knowing that these specific plant compounds in tea, coffee, and cacao mm -hmm. might interact directly with something as fundamental as your stem cells, yeah. how does that change the way you look at the cup you reach for first thing tomorrow? Yeah, it definitely gives you something to, uh, to mull over with your next brew.